Good evening. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. I have sent you the link. For? The uh, YouTube link. Oh, okay. I'll have a look at it. Thanks. Thanks. Appreciate it. And uh, I, uh, the attendees would not be able to uh, connect now. They would be able to join, but not uh, connect now. I would start the webinar uh, around close to five so that they can uh, join in. So what time? Five is the time. Yeah. Or if you want, I can uh, start it earlier. Anyway. I just say 4.55. That should be okay. 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 Right. So what we'll do is we'll have the backdrop and when president or someone is speaking, we will have their, uh, uh, you know, if they're uh, switched on the cameras, we'll have them, uh, we'll, sh we'll be showing them on the screen. We can remove the backdrop at that point in time.
Good afternoon. I'm very much here. Yeah. On time. Absolutely. The bad habit of coming actually ahead of time sometimes. Not at all. Always best. Better to be before. Coming than late. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you have sent the link to Ravi, no? Yes, I have spoken to him also. He had confirmed that he has received it. Oh, lovely. Good. So only your group will be. Uh, you will put everybody else on mute, right? Yes. Yeah, so this is this is an events uh, platform, sir. So only the people who are on the panel will be able to unmute themselves. The rest all will be only uh, spectators, and they can put uh, their questions on the chat. Question. Okay. Lovely. Got four hundred and fifty-seven number. I saw. Is uh, five hundred and something now. Five hundred plus, is it? Yeah, as of now. <clears throat> as of now, is what? Uh, just a second. Five seventy-one. A goodness me. Like uh, you, Yeah, I hope everyone <laughs> gets to join in. Well, at least. Anyway, uh, at least. There could be some dropouts, you know. It usually happens. So, but I think yeah, it's a good uh, a good thing. And we have what we have done is uh, in case someone is unable to log in because of any other issues, we have mm. uh, created a, a a YouTube uh, link, which I, I just sent it across to you. Correct, which can be circulated. Yeah. Yeah. So in case they are not able to log in, they can still uh, go through the session online. Oh, it's also happening via YouTube, is it? We are also doing it. Yes, we are also broadcasting on YouTube simultaneously. Absolutely. Wow! Wow! So maybe if you want, you can. People who have not logged in, they could probably watch it on the move. Ah, that's interesting. I'll just pass it on to people. Sure, please. Good evening, doctor. Good evening. Good evening. Is it a sir? Is it a Swami? Good to see you. Good to see you also, sir. Yeah. Is it Manal? Is it a Manal? Manal. Where is it? Where is it? You have to Akshya Trithiya, Alva. Ah? You have to Akshya Trithiya. Correct. 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 Ah, that means you start today. Oh, oh, oh. Good. It, it, auspicious day in some ways, right? Exactly. And you today's Eid Mubarak. <laughs> always, always. Oh yeah. Eli sir, Ravi, uh, uh, Doctor Ravi, uh, Eli Dira. Uh, I'll call him. I'll call. Uh, no, no, I I'll think call Ravi now. Still enough time. Has he joined? You find him? No, I don't think we find him yet. No, no, I will call him now. Yeah, no worries. So Anil, you you have the uh, this thing, is it? The The presentation. Uh, presentation. I don't know. I've I've not checked if I got it yet. 
No, I won't have got it. I'll tell you. <coughs> When he joins, he'll give it to you. All right. Ravi is like that. He will come. He is like Rajini Kant. Let's have one donor. Let's have one donor. Sir, on joke, bandi to sir, nangi. Banta. Ravi. Rajini Kant. Ravi. Vaccine. One second, Ravi. Uh, Ravi, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, we are all ready. I'm logging in. Give me two minutes. Just yeah. one minute. Okay, good. You're logging in. No problem, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Rajini uh, Kant. Rajini Kant took the vaccine. Rajini Kant is uh, donating vaccine from his body, Ante. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, at least good to laugh. You know, there's people are still finding the humor side of this whole thing. Absolutely. Uh, 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 575 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 576 
and followed by about 45 minutes of uh, question. discussion question answers if it is spill over whether it's okay we can move on a little more yeah but make sure the spill over is not from a bat to a pangolin to a human being exactly right we'll go in the reverse direction <laughs> <laughs> we have already started in mysore ah huh? yeah, yeah we gave it to yeah. lions <laughs> In oh, yeah, I saw, I saw. <laughs> but doctor actually animals can contract covid too yes yes and is it as bad for them as it is for human beings uh no but they do get cold and cough and sneeze okay the first first uh, uh, transmission to animals was in denmark ah and that was to in a mink farm you know where minks are reared for making correct, for correct. coats mm -hmm. and that that blasted virus came back to human beings again it did one full cycle <laughs> human to me oh, to human who asked a question about the zoo uh, can it go to animals anil is it no 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 sir satish has ah nan kelu satish nan kelu satish mysur godre mysur zoo hogi ad don't go and kiss a lion because you'll get it from the lion that's what is saying <laughs> my my caution is No lion, no lioness. Also, be careful. <laughs> Actually, doctor, now I'll tell. Let me take an advantage that I have both of you. Nani, I had COVID in November. Okay. For me, it was I beat you. I had in October. No. <laughs> <laughs> so Nani, it was very mild, doc. Uh, I mean, I just had half a days of headache, but in those days, I thought it's better to get tested, and I got tested. Mm. And I had uh, COVID, and man, manly, all the even my wife also had my kids also got it, and all that. uh then of course we recovered and i took a vaccine in first week of march mm. so just for curiosity i got my antibody tested sometime during the end of uh, you know end, i think end of april uh, mm. it read 335 igg or something okay so i wanted to know whether i should take a second jab or not anta uh, i took it anyway the day before yesterday i just went and took it anyway yeah you should actually There is no okay. question of I should yeah, or I should yeah, not. Yeah, Follow the schedule. Absolutely. Whatever is prescribed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Crazy times. Uh, 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 Ravi, the yes, previous uh, KGA YouTube has already hit thirty-five k, thirty-five thousand hits. Oh, nice. Huh? Yeah, and today they mm. are. While we are talking, mm. they are also showing it live in YouTube. It's happening live in YouTube also. Oh, this one. This yeah, one. yeah, yeah. This one. Okay. Today's one. There, you can reach many more people. Yes, yes, yes. So this event, after it goes, uh, uh, I know that there there is interest even in the, in the US in the Indian community. So uh, uh, I, I hope it benefits. It, it benefits as many people as as possible. That's the whole purpose of having this uh, event. Because I personally learned learned a lot in that half uh, you know half an hour, forty five minutes Q and A in KGA. You know. Mm. So, na na makkal nala kurs konde. I put my kids, my wife also to sit through that. Yes. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Because you know, and I, one of the biggest problems I see, even many doctors themselves are not very clear, sir. They are not giving clear. Uh, mm. That is another thing. Doctor Ravi is very. Doctor Ravi is very familiar with that scenario. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can I ask a question, please? Yes. Yes, please. Uh, so this is Vikram from Akma. Uh, just a small layman's question uh, yeah. we have observed that uh, once in every 100 years there's a pandemic happening one yeah. or the other like 1918 there was a pandemic 2020s there was a pan there's a pandemic yeah. so is there any logical reasoning to it or is just a coincidence um i i don't know why the timing is so i don't think anybody knows but i know that human beings forget their lessons uh, in one generation <laughs> so this is the price we are paying for not remembering the lessons our fathers and grandfathers learned so that is the answer uh, actually i am writing a piece for the indian express for this uh, this sunday i was working on it today i hope after this meeting i'll finish it on learning to live with viruses mm. and how it is important to to learn lessons from a pandemic and 
practice those lessons during inter pandemic periods you know this this uh, and i can assure you the next one is not going to be 100 years <laughs> many of you uh, will see it in your lifetime uh, i don't know maybe sundar and i also may see it in our lifetime the way things are the way human beings are behaving so human beings are perpetuating the virus they are not allowing it to go going and seeking in every nook and yeah. corner and pulling it and out and getting it yeah pulling it back yeah yeah, yeah. but this is also a constant right. battle la doctors this is a constant battle between humans and viruses uh, i mean evolution is pro- probably no i i i i tend to disagree i exactly yeah advocate for viruses over the last uh, 30 years working with them they are wonderful uh, creatures mm-hmm. they stay in their own niches it's only we who go and pull them out seek them out and then blame and them invite problems true and we also are responsible for the spread on their own they do not jump from uh, dr sundar to me when he had covid yeah. because i didn't go and see him that time <laughs> sir nimge no it was very mild sir nimge no dr kalyan not a very mild uh, mild one mild one because i was uh, quarantined at home we all tested because we thought we will not get any any positive but yeah i have body ache and nothing else. one of the reasons he had a mild illness is say, he is my friend for the last uh, 30 years so <laughs> <laughs> it looks like virus is killed of dr kalyan <laughs> you better bet <laughs> see it is inevitable that we contract it because we see people we see patients in any given time at one time there are seven eight patients sitting in the clinic and they don't think they have a you know covid at all they think you've got a mild cough sore throat but you don't really really get covid and by the time they are sitting there for half an hour one hour go to the doctor come back go to pay the amount they have been wandering and they have been infecting mm. so it it bound to happen i think we are all it's... Nirja, I mean the question. They have had about uh, more than two hundred questions. I think they have divided into second wave, third wave in children, COVID care, psychology, symptoms, test, medication, vaccination, etc. Various behavior. So we will take some questions from them because they have put it in different categories. It's a very well done, a good job done. I must compliment your team, Satish. They have done a good job. And after that, if there are questions, we will take it from here. it may not be possible to have all the question answer because there are too many question answers it shall may take to us absolutely sir yeah, and you so. can you can choose the quality of questions because yeah, some, yeah, of yeah, are, yeah. some of them are asked what will happen to automotive industry i mean, I mean the, wow. <laughs> they are totally irrelevant to the subject so those three questions that, you can that, 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 that has not been passed on <laughs> uh, so okay Right. yeah probably you know the there are a lot of questions on viral behavior you know the the yeah, viruses we will, we will no i see that uh, my job i will pick what may be relevant to the participants right perfect perfect so the yeah, larger doctor ravi's presentation of... yes dr ravi's presentation would anyway cover a lot of quest the queries well, most of it most of it will get covered right yeah. right right so but we will leave that out so we have our president join in yes Hi Satish, how are you? Fine, Deepak. How are you? Let me take this opportunity to introduce uh, Dr. Kalyan Sundar. Dr. Hi. Kalyan, this is Deepak, my boss and my friend, and the president <laughs> of Acma Fraternity. Uh, you know, you. Yeah. And uh, Deepak, that is Dr. Ravi, the the renowned uh, the person that the Hi. whole country is uh, seeking for for his knowledge and advice. So, right. Dr. Ravi, he is Deepak Jain, the president of Acma, and uh, he is the leader of our organizations. Good evening, good evening, Dr. Ravi, and good evening, Dr. Kalyan Sundaram. Thank you very much for giving us uh, you know, this guidance. I think uh, Satish has been a rock star within our fraternity, and I think oh, there are yes, so yes, many people who actually, you know, signed up for this. Uh, and I'm sure, you know, everyone's really, really concerned. I think, of course, uh, you know, I've seen Dr. Ravi on many shows. Uh, you know, you, you're <laughs> really, I mean, say the nation is wanting to hear your voice. Uh, so I think the nation uh, wants to know. Yeah. 
but definitely but, right now but awesome. sundar sundar is not like uh, arnab <laughs> he's actually worse than, he's actually worse than arnab goswami <laughs> <laughs> thank you ravi when we have friends Thanks. like you <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I think it's uh, it's great because you know, for us as manufacturing organizations, you know, opening up and of course the whole nation right now is under lockdown, partial yeah. lockdown curfew, and opening up, it's a really a cause of concern, and we're extremely fragile. Um, so it's, it'll be great to hear from you and understand what what we are dealing with and how to. <laughs> Doctor Ravi, Doctor Kalyan, this is Murli. Uh, Hi, good evening, sir. And really, hi. Thanks a lot for actually accepting and coming on this show. I am sure it is going to be very, very useful for all our colleagues in Atma. We hope you are sitting so. in a beautiful park, I know. <laughs> uh, actually, sir, I have two virtual backgrounds. One is whatever is visible in front of my room, and whatever is behind my room. I have chosen okay. the first one. Today. Exactly. Please, please, uh, please talk to each other. I'll be back in two minutes, please. Yeah, sure. I'll also just pick up some water. Really, and if you see, if you see the, if you see the curtain, curtain at the back, yes, that covers my, that covers my bar. I thought it would be appropriate. Oh, I see. What I collected here. Sir, that will be an even better background. <laughs> Especially when you are going into Friday evening. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. The weekend beckons. But how are you <laughs> asking something? You are both in Bangalore? Yeah, very good, sir. Uh, Murali and Dipajian both in Bangalore? No, sir. I am I am from Chennai. And uh, I think Deepak oh, okay. is from Delhi. Yeah, well, lovely. Which industry you are coming from, Mr. Uh, Murali? Uh, sir, we come from uh, an automotive component, of course. We make car air conditioners and heat exchangers, compressors. So we to all. It's uh, it was earlier called Ford long back. It has changed hands a yeah. few times. It was then called Visteon. Now it has been hived off, and it is a Korean company called Hanon. H A N O N. This is car air conditioner. Yeah. Yes. And Mr. James. Um, so I am actually uh, running a company which basically does lighting systems, gear shifter systems. Mm. So, now, you know, lighter note, I always tell my friends that you're driving on Indian roads and you see a headlamp glaring, you know, and you curse that yep. person. The majority <laughs> of it is probably because of me, <laughs> but it's probably also a lot to do with the driver behavior. But, uh, but so we, we do we do these uh, systems, lighting systems, gear shifter systems, and a few other uh, auto components, but largely, again, all auto pumps. And whenever you drive a vehicle and you go over a hump and you don't feel good about the suspension, that is my fault, sir. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, you are in trouble, Satish. <laughs> I know, my sir. Slide, my title slide is that. <laughs> Road with many humps. Exactly. He's, good. He's got a slide with all the bumps. Well, it's Road better, it's better to take ownership of the suspension rather than tell <laughs> our honorable minister, Gatkari, <laughs> that something has to do with this thing. <laughs> so, uh, the people are now being admitted into the uh, uh, room. So, Lovely. another one minute, we'll start. I mean, five minutes, we start the session. Uh, just, one just, just one clarification. Uh, when um, you say people are being admitted, can the audience also hear us? Or do you can see them on the screen? How, how does it go? Uh, Vikram, can you please... Uh... Uh, sir, they would be able to hear us. Uh, they would not be able to speak. So this is the panelist, uh, this thing, right? Exactly. Okay, yeah. so so I guess once they get admitted, then they can hear this conversation as well. So we need to keep quiet is what you're saying, Deepak. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> no, you can, you can make all inappropriate jokes. No, no appropriate thing. <laughs> you can only see a home minister start. So, Sadish, I'll just uh, do is that I'll just, uh, you know, um, welcome, just do a bit of welcome uh, and uh, give it to you to actually do the introductions and do the context setting, right? Yeah, yeah. So basically, when I'll be doing a very snappy introduction, after that, you know, I think the, the duo is very, uh, they have a beautiful tango going on. So, I think I think people are there to listen to them. So, we will just, you know, I, I get you. So, we will just do the introduction and we'll leave the floor to them. Perfect, thank you. <clears throat> uh, 
so can we start now please uh, we have four minutes more yeah, no, yeah. Yeah, we have four more. minutes more yeah which is okay okay uh, let's I mean, we can we can we can allow them in now right i, I think they're already in uh, if i'm not mistaken but they're not you can't see them here oh you can't see their numbers also here okay okay all right only participants we can see is is there anil a way to see how many attendees there are yeah. Uh, no, so only after they uh, come in. So, so you haven't allowed them in? No, not uh, not yet. No, so you can allow them in. I think that's that's. Let let it queue up. Yeah, Dr. Kalyan, Dr. Ravi, uh, that I want to introduce uh, Shubha to you. Is, Hi. She is the boss of the South. Wow. So, uh, <laughs> Good evening, Doctor. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, Shubha. Good evening. Thank you so much uh, for taking the time to talk. I think we have an amazing, interesting uh, talk. Lots of people. Good. You are based out of Bangalore, Chennai. 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 Mm -hmm. Now we can see the participants screen running. The numbers climbing up. Oh yes. The count is climbing up like the virus count. I thought we had something like five hundred odd registrations right now. Yeah, but usually, and I think it's always good, uh, Ravi. That um, uh, oh, sorry, Doctor Ravi, it's good that me and Satish are filling up for the first two three minutes just for the introduction and context setting, because we always seen that even in this virtual world, maybe around five or four, five or five will have the maximum. <laughs> I, the last I heard, there were 543 registrations. That was about 40 minutes ago. And I understand anything above 500 will get diverted to YouTube. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, okay. we wouldn't see beyond that on Zoom. Ah, okay, okay. Six minutes of now. Many of them also would be joining a little bit, I'm sorry, maybe two, three minutes late type. Yeah, right? always. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Always. Uh, That's what I called the other day, the James Bond tanks. Last minute, running in and then climbing onto the wings of the flight and then taking off. <laughs> so after 500, automatically they'll get diverted to YouTube. YouTube right? yeah. Oh, that's good technology. Learning a lot every time. Yes. Dr. Ravi, you are able to see in the top left, it says live on YouTube as well. Yes. Top left. Correct. Yeah. Sort of seeing you getting connected now. Good evening, Saurabh. How are you? Good evening. I am fine. How are you? Very fine, sir. Let me introduce Dr. Kalyan and Dr. Ravi to you. Hi. Hi. Good evening, Dr. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Hi. How are you, Saurabh? In Mumbai still? <laughs> yeah, Mumbai. So, Saurabh is co-chairing our Western region and he's joining in. Oh, lovely. Mm. So, we have quite a bit of an uh, All India representation today. So, so, we are about 800 plus members um, all across uh, basically the country. And we actually huh. do have, uh, represent about 50%. The auto sector actually represents 50% of the manufacturing GDP of the country. Um, oh, and wow. auto components uh, actually do about 25%, and the OEMs do 25%. Uh, that's how the split is. And of course, uh, ACMA with its 800 members uh, do actually represent almost 85% of the organized sector. Um, we peaked in 2018 with about $59 billion revenue. This is annual revenue. Uh, and of course, even last year, we did about close to 50, or last to last year. Uh, COVID year, we still, the numbers are coming in. 
uh, but in 1920, we did about 50 billion collectively as auto component uh, manufacturers within the country. So that, that's a big number. What is it, Deepak? Um, just give a few more minutes, Deepak. I think we can start, I think. Uh, yeah, it's one minute past five, two minutes past five. Okay, good, good. Yeah. Mm. Sure. Should we start now? You're crossing nearly, you're touching 200 now. 200, yeah. I yeah, think I we think can I, start, I, Anil. I think, yeah, we yeah, can. Yeah, yeah in respect yeah. of time. Of Anil, all, I think uh, we, we opened up only at uh, four minutes to five. Yeah, yeah. Probably give a couple of minutes more. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay. So Anil, uh, I'll wait for your cue and then I can probably then start, yeah? Sure, Mr. President. <clears throat> Just two more minutes, we can start. Sure. Thank you. <clears throat> Situation there under uh, slightly getting better, Deepak? Um, yes. I mean, so my only measure is uh, I only call a few doctors and I say, how is the situation in the hospital? I, I would not kind of rely actually on the count or the, you know, the stacks, but definitely in the hospital is a lot better in the NCR. So definitely there is some, some respite. Yes, started receiving questions in the chat box. Okay, and I think we're also hitting the 250 mark, so maybe whenever we... Uh... Right. I think let's start at Titus, 5. Yes, I think we should start respecting the time of all who joined us. So good evening, everyone, and welcome to the uh, special session on COVID-19 and where we are heading. Um, may I request... President Akma, Mr. Deepak Jain, to please propose his welcome remarks. Thank you, Anil. Good evening, friends, colleagues from all over India. Thank you for joining in this very special and exclusive session. And as you can see on your screen, we're saying COVID-19, where are we heading? A question which is in everyone's mind. And I must compliment the Southern region and especially my friend and colleague Satish Machani to actually bring this very exclusive session with very two eminent uh, and distinguished personalities. Today, India is fully under some kind of lockdown or a curfew, be it partial, be it complete. And as supply chains, we are fractured. We know that most of our OEMs have also declared preponement of their annual maintenance shutdowns. And depending on the situation, they are extending the same. We as supply chain partners have to keep on supplying and make our manufacturing safe and balance between lives and livelihoods. As we we're going to restart the operation. I think we want to know what kind of nature of this virus we will be dealing with in the future. And I think we will find a lot of answers in this interaction. So without wasting much of our time, I would like to hand over the mic to my friend Satish to give the proper introductions. 
Satish, over to you. Thank you, uh, Deepak. Uh, a very good evening to everybody. Uh, and I'm extremely overwhelmed by the response and participation for today's event. And I would like to first of all, thank the president of ACPA, Mr. Deepak, a friend of mine, for really having encouraged this event. In today's world, as Deepak said, our mind space is predominantly occupied by only one thing, and that is this pandemic. We are actually surrounded by plethora of information, which actually oftentimes leaves us with more questions than answers. And since the situation is actually evolving, there is really a need for authentic and current information. And to realize this, I'm very grateful to Dr. Ravi for accepting to do this session for us. In this ghastly second wave of COVID, Dr. Ravi is one of the most sought out experts on all subjects related to this pandemic. He appears on primetime television on a regular basis to offer his views and advice. We are very glad that you are here with us today, sir. And we hope that our minds will get decluttered with your wisdom on this subject. To moderate this event, I would like to invite Dr. Kalyan Sundaram. Let me quickly introduce him to all of you. He is doctor of medicine in psychiatry from the 1970 batch. He was in the faculty of Nimans from 1976 to 1981 and having a private practice after that. His list of accolades is enormous. He's the honorary CEO of Richmond Fellowship, currently honorable advisor RFS. He has been professor of psychiatry and principal at the RFPG college till 2015. And he has published various articles, journals, and written many textbooks as well. He was finalist of Bangalorean of the Year Award in 2013. He's also holder of the WAPR, the Indian Chapter Award for Excellence in Psychological Rehabilitation in 2016. He's also holder of American Psychiatric Society for Dedicated and Distinguished Leadership Award in the year 2019. He's been honored by the IPS for the contribution to PSR in December 2020. And actually, this list goes on and on. I have to tell all of you how this session actually came about. I had attended a session by Dr. Ravi a while back. And honestly, that session cleared a lot of my doubts on, on COVID. You know, there were questions of wave one, wave two. Now there's questions of wave three. Vaccines, which one to take, when to take, when not to take, about children, about seniors, etc. And Dr. Ravi took all of those questions head on. I felt that it's very important to disseminate this knowledge to as many people as possible. To facilitate this, I reached out to Dr. Kalyan. When I spoke to him, he actually spoke as if he knew me forever, though I was speaking to him for the first time. The call actually lasted for 15 minutes, but he made me smile bulk of that time by his quick banter. And before closing the call, he told me why he did that. He stressed the importance of keeping our spirits high. He's so right indeed. All of us, we, all we hear every day is fear and sorrow and horror. Yes, we are surrounded by it. We have not actually placed enough importance to the psychological impact that it has had on all of us. And Dr. Kalyan told me that we have to remain positive. That's the only spirit and attitude that will carry us through these difficult times. Mm -hmm. We are uh, at ACMA, as our president said, our membership base is more than 800 across the country. We have always been at forefront of social responsibility. And our members through these times have been involved in various activities such as creating beds, providing oxygen, concentrators, medical equipment, PPEs, etc., to support the administration to deal with this terrible second wave. And I believe, honestly, sharing knowledge on this mm -hmm. pandemic is of equal importance as well. So today, we are very proud to present Dr. Ravi and Dr. Kalyan who will help us understand the situation a little better. And at the mm -hmm. end of the session, I'm sure all of us will have a better understanding of where we are. I also sincerely thank Shubha, Murli, and special thanks to Anil and Nirja for organizing this event. And without much delay, the floor is all Doctor, uh, yours, Dr. Kalyan. Thank you. Thank you, Satish. And thank you, ACMA president and members. And Satish has two other arms. He's a three-legged man, two other legs, to the rice being um, Nirja and Anil. When uh, Satish approached me about this problem, uh, I'll have to check with Dr. Ravi. 
and he said sir we are not able to get dr ravi they said if we approach dr ravi through you we may be able to succeed so here i am the pujari for the ravi the idol ravi as you all know dr ravi uh, is so popular in this matter of conveying the right kind of information you see him everywhere you see him here you see him there like the scarlet pimpernel the why because there are several people conveying several things in what ravi very fondly calls the whatsapp university ravi has a very fondness for whatsapp university you will hear him referring to that very soon today is eid ramzan and today also is akshay tritiya some of the men friends of mine very you know gleefully messaged me and said dr saab one good thing about this covid lockdown we are not allowed to go out otherwise our wives would have cajoled coaxed and maybe used some strong arm tactics to go and buy gold if you buy gold on akshay tritiya day they say you will buy gold every day every week we were terrified the virus saved us there are good things about the virus but there are lot of things that we do not know about the virus not about the virus lot of things we do not want to appreciate about our own behavior which contributes to the virus spread last week i saw a small video sent by a friend lockdown announced in bangalore and in a small place in chitpet a little uh, door is opened and i'm waiting what is happening now about 70 80 women are coming out buying sarees that are the time allotted for buying essentials the question we have to ask ourselves is what is essential what is relevant in these times how are we contributing to the sustenance of the virus instead of allowing it to dissipate we contribute to its survival so we will talk about it more to introduce before i ask dr ravi to speak a brief introduction the retired professor of neurovirology in imans graduate of madras medical college md microbiology from jipmer he started the specialty of neurovirology in imans about 30 plus years ago he has several contributions patents several original research which has taken him to different parts of the country and been member of who cro and an examiner for countries like sri lanka and is a visiting professor of liverpool uk in 2013 when ravi retired very recently i asked ravi what you are going to have a good time spend a relaxed time with the family he said my work has now begun to be more because of the virus that has spread among us he is so busy sometimes If, the, if his wife needs to ask him something, she joins the program and asks him a question, and that is how busy Doctor Ravi is. Without wasting any of your time, I have no request, my dear friend, Doctor Ravi. He is so popular in his area of specialty. Most people refer to him as Virus Ravi because he and virus are inseparable. The YouTube that was created after the KGA event. my friend who is keeping a track of it says till yesterday morning it has hit 35000 hits i am sure with your youtube because people are hungry for knowledge people are hungry for real correct information i give you dr ravi to make his presentation after which there will be question and answers several questions have already been sent to us once we finish it we may be able to take a few questions on the spot Uh, no raising of hands only question that are come up on the question and answer box will be moderated by me sometimes ravi will answer sometimes i might intervene you will have to put up with me now dr ravi thank you <laughs> thank you uh, kalyan sundaram namaskar to everybody uh, thank akma president uh, mr deepak sitish anil murli and all the others Uh, office bearers and members of acma uh, it's indeed a great uh, pleasure to meet so many people online and uh, talk to you about uh, covid 19 where we are heading uh, 
what I will do, this is the outline of my talk. I will be starting with some acknowledgements. It's important to acknowledge <clears throat> events. Give you a, a one slide uh, history of what uh, we have learned from history. Then an audit of what we have learned in the last two waves. With respect to the virus, its spread, the clinical manifestations and vaccines, and what is ahead for us? How do we prepare for the future? The underlying thread for the entire presentation is not to create panic, but to empower all of you with knowledge, which is credible, and which is not based on impressions, but is based on scientific facts, so that you then can contribute to prevention and protection of yourself as well as your family. Uh, there's a quotation at the bottom of this slide, and uh, I'm beginning to learn a lot about this guy called uh, George Santayana. He lived between 1863 and 1952, and he, he, he worked at Harvard. And later life he spent uh, in his uh, home country, Spain. He's a philosopher, essayist, poet, and novelist, and his quote, many of you would have come across in your life. Those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. That's exactly what I'm, uh, I'm doing in this slide, trying to show you a graph, a graph of data more than a century ago. This is about the sp Spanish flu. It shows the dates on the uh, horizontal axis, and it shows the number of deaths on the uh, vertical axis, and this is from uh, UK, weekly death. It all started in late 19, uh, 18, uh, uh, sorry, 1917, and during the World War, there was a number of uh, soldiers who came down with uh, flu. Then there was a lull for a couple of months, and then came the second wave, which was very, very huge which is almost five to seven times what the first wave was. Very reminiscent of what is happening today in India. The second wave in COVID is five to seven times more, depending on which area we're talking about. And then, of course, there was a lull for a couple of weeks or months, and then the third wave came. So this is reality. It has happened earlier. It will happen now also. This... Uh, virus that has caused this devastation in our lifetime is called corona because it has an appearance of a crown under the electron microscope. It is uh, spherical in shape and it started on the surface with a, a, a protein that is globular uh, and uh, that gives the appearance of a crown. Now these are the viruses that measure about 60 to 120 nanometers. They've been around for quite some time. There are six different coronaviruses that were known to mankind before uh, the advent of the new novel coronavirus that came in 2019. SARS and MERS were the other severe coronaviruses. The other four caused mild symptoms like cold, cough, and diarrhea. These were the first two severe uh, respiratory syndrome viruses. SARS was appeared in 2002, and uh, by 2003, uh, we had learned how to control it. And now it occurs only as sporadic cases. MERS is Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome, emerged in the, in the Middle East, and it's still spreading, but restricted largely to the Middle Eastern uh, region of the world. These viruses are widely distributed in humans, animals, and birds. And uh, what happens, another important feature of these viruses is they can spill over from one species to another. The reservoirs of coronaviruses are bats and rodents. All the three uh, coronaviruses that cause severe respiratory disease, namely SARS-CoV-1, MERS coronavirus and the new SARS-CoV-2. The natural reservoirs for these three viruses are bats. 
the sars cov 1 which came in 2002 is a spillover from a bat to a civet cat the mers coronavirus is a spillover from bat to camels and then human beings and sars cov 2 is a spillover from bat to an ant eater known as pangolin and then to human beings and we we are guessing now that this must have happened in the wet market of wuhan in southern china these viruses are endowed with the property of mutating what is mutation mutation is the ability to change its appearance and its properties now once a mutant emerges in any part of the world it quickly spreads to the other parts of the world now what you're seeing on the graph in the top is a cartoon that shows you how the uh, variant detected in united kingdom most popularly in lepres known as uk variant it is not that the variation uh, the mutation occurred in uk it is that the mutation was first detected in uk now it has spread to almost uh, it has spread to all the continents and more than about 70 80 nations now thanks to air travel spread of viruses is occurring very very fast it's only a question of days if not weeks when viruses spread from one country to another in the bottom is the the actual density of spread of the uk variant in a heat map we in uh, in research use a heat map the darker the color that means the density of cases is more the lighter the color that means density is less now this is a heat map that the up uh, between Uh, december and february of this year december last year you can see in a matter of 3 months the uk variant has spread to many many countries including india so why do viruses mutate people always ask me viruses why do viruses mutate uh, corona virus is an rna virus all rna viruses have a enzyme known as rna dependent rna polymerase the function of this enzyme is to copy the genetic material of the virus and when it copies it makes mistakes because it has poor proof reading ability so the coronavirus uh, rna has 30000 blocks in it each time it is copied there's one error that means 29999 nucleotides are identical to the parent strand but there is one change you can imagine this is the frequency of mutation of uh, covid-19 virus and in an individual millions of viral particles are produced a day so there will be millions of mutations thankfully most of these mutations do not change the virus and they they do not affect the virus and many of these mutant viruses die because they are not able to replicate but some of them do change the behavior of the virus because mutations in key areas changes amino acids and that changes protein structure and so viruses become more efficient with respect to transmission sometimes they can become more virulent also means they can cause more severe disease also today over the last one year we have five variants mutants that are spreading fast and thereby they are called variants of concern and these five are the uk variant which here is represented on the left as b.1.117 south african variant which is mutations over the uk virus and that is b.1.351 then the brazil variant detected in brazil which is p.1 then we have the californian variant which was detected in california in late last year b.1.427 this is the forerunner of the indian variant which we call the maharashtra mutant or the double mutant and that is called b.1.617 so these five variants or mutants have been classified as variants of concern by uh, the who uh, and the 
public health england now let's come to the b point 1.617 because it is very fast spreading within the country and it is taking over uh, many states this is an example to show you this is a wave curve about various variants you can the, you can see the key on the uh, on the right side b.6.1.617 the double maharashtra mutant is re represented in red color it started as a very small uh, proportion in bengal and in a matter of a few months you can see now most of the viruses being sequenced in bengal is the maharashtra mutant the same is the case with many south indian states and starting from uh, uh, january 2020 uh, when there were a few mutants detected in south india you can see more than 50% of viruses circulating in south india today are predominantly the maharashtra mutant now this is the the uh, the global circulation of 617 in the last 2 3 months as of yesterday it has spread, spread to 48 countries and it is spreading fast in some countries like uk australia new zealand and other countries because it is spreading very fast and that's the map that shows you there is a uh, that large genomic database globally that is maintained and that database has shown that it originated in india and it is spread across to various countries in the in the world and because of this the world health organization and uh, public health england classified it as a variant of concern now what does a variant of concern mean it means it spreads to more number of people compared to a non mutant parent virus so infectivity of many of these variants is 40 to 60% more than the parent virus that uh, first came out in uh, wuhan in china in late 2019 mutant or no mutant we know that the best way to protect oneself against this virus is by wearing masks why do we say that because the virus is a respiratory virus it causes primarily respiratory disease it multiplies in the nose throat and in the lungs and when people cough sneeze breathe sing talk virus droplets known as uh, micro droplets are thrown out which we can't see with the naked eye and if the droplet is uh, slightly bigger in size it usually falls to the ground because of gravity and that's about 3 to 6 feet so large droplets you can avoid by wearing mask and also staying 3 to 6 feet away from other people if nobody wears mask the chances of getting infection from a person who is covid positive is 90% if the healthy person wears a mask and the covid person is not wearing a mask the chance is 30% if both with the infected person wears a mask and the normal person does not wear a mask chances are 5% if both wear mask and maintain a distance it's been 1 to 5% so we know this not only now but we know it for a very long time and we knew it more with influenza epidemics we knew it during the 2009 pandemic before that sars was controlled in china and other countries by wearing masks we did not have vac vaccines mers is also controlled by wearing masks so i am dwelling on this because this is something extremely important masking and distancing are both extremely important when i say wear a mask i realize quite often even including about uh, among people who are educated and some of them are healthcare personnel masks are worn as more a routine as a chore with no interest in it and of course some people wear masks as ornaments below their neck on their head and even appear on tv channels with that it's very amusing to watch people like that mask has to be worn properly 
and there are three types of masks people generally use cloth mask surgical mask and the n95 aerosol prevention mask masks of cotton and surgical mask should be three layers because that is when it is effective in preventing droplets from entering your nose and mouth it should be worn tight entire nose this entire area of nose mouth chin it should be tightly covered if you wear a mask properly you should experience some discomfort in breathing that's when your mask is worn properly and of course mask cannot be worn eternally many people practice that all masks are effective for 6 to 8 hours following which the moisture in the breath will make the mask wet and water molecules act as a vehicle to transport virus from outside so you need multiple masks if you are wearing it for a long time in a day you need to keep changing masks cotton masks are reusable surgical and n95 masks are not reusable cotton masks can be um, put into water and soap washed that kills the virus dried in the sun and then pressed and used please do not reuse surgical masks and n95 masks maybe once or twice but definitely not beyond that remove the mask from your ears where the where the straps are holding never touch a mask after its use in front of the face because you will contaminate your fingers washing hands is the other one what did we know learn about covid during the last one year in the first wave we knew this is a heat map of karnataka which we published just to give you a story we knew that 90% of the people you look at the tables on the right the first table tells you 90% were asymptomatic 3096 as compared to 300 who were symptomatic so asymptomatic infections are very common or mildly symptomatic who are the people who are most affected in the first wave it is people above 50 years of age they constituted 70% who are the people who had severe disease and died elderly people with comorbidities like diabetes and hypertension so we know we knew about it now what what uh, how does covid produce disease this is something that we need to understand this virus attaches to a very very important molecule on human cells that controls uh, blood pressure it's called angiotensin converting enzyme receptor so the virus attaches there then it can enter cells multiply and kill cells that's one mechanism because it attaches to blood pressure receptors it can alter blood pressure and produce hemodynamic changes because it attaches to blood pressure blood vessel lining which is called endothelium all blood vessel linings it can multiply and damage and result in clot formation so my, micro clots are formed in blood vessels and this can cause complications but the most commonest mechanism by which virus produces lung disease is not on its own the virus multiplies in the lung and induces a very aggressive defense reaction from the human defense system it's a very uh, very very aggressive resulting in the immune cells homing into the lung and pouring out loads of fluid so the lung becomes air sac becomes bags of water thereby oxygenation gets affected and the patient eventually succumbs if he is not treated properly the father of modern microbiology described this very beautifully on his deathbed saying the germ is nothing the terrain is everything so let's not blame blame the poor virus for the disease it's the way that we respond that we decide whether we'll have a mild illness or a serious illness on the left you see the common symptoms fever cold running nose dry cough breathlessness fatigue myalgia diarrhea recent loss of smell or taste now all these are symptoms of covid so any of these during the current wave if you have 
if you have loss of smell and taste that is diagnostic of covid i mean you don't even need a test all the others please suspect that you have the infection and then get tested testing is the only way that you will know whether you have the infection fortunately 80% of people are shown in the pyramid in the center are mildly symptomatic or no symptoms 10 to 15% of people are the people who develop some severe symptoms become breathless and require oxygen support but it is the unfortunate five people who become very critical require ventilatory support they go on the ventilation when does this happen usually fever runs for 2 to 3 days in some people fever can run for 10 days and be the only symptom but when do these people start deteriorating you should remember between the 5th and the 10th day people deteriorate so if you are asymptomatic and at home please monitor your oxygen with an oximeter and that oximeter monitoring has to be at least 5 6 times during the time you are awake and also one important simple test that you should do is the 6 minute walk test it's a very simple test take your pulse oximeter reading by putting the clip on to your finger note down the reading briskly walk inside the room for 6 minutes and again take your concentration and the difference between the first reading and the second reading should not be more than 5% that means if the first reading was 97 up to 92 is okay but if it it's 90 that means it's 7% less then it is an indicator that you need to get into hospital and you may need oxygen most people do not do this most people are not aware of this since they are symptom uh, are very mild for 3 4 to 3 to 4 days people stop monitoring themselves then what happens on the 7th day sudden when oxygen starts dropping it happens very dramatically over 12 to 24 hours and within a day you will be breathless that is why remember you have to keep yourself monitoring always more so between 5 and 12 days covid on the right shows you that it affects almost every system post covid complications can be in the brain like encephalitis and stroke it can cause kidney injury it causes heart attacks and a lot of problems in the heart it causes diabetes in people who have not been diabetic or worsens it causes skin problems it causes liver problems today you know covid you know entire medicine you are a multi multi specialist if you have treated covid the best way human beings in the history in the last 100 years Uh, have you seen you have seen they rely a lot on vaccines i i have a slide that i'll talk to you why vaccination is very attractive uh, vaccines are produced uh, after meticulous research and taking care that a lot of testing is now broadly vaccines are produced in three st- there are three stages in vaccine production a preclinical testing the clinical testing and then monitoring the preclinical testing is normally for conventional vaccines it used to take 3 to 5 years clinical testing used to take 3 years but in the case of covid it is unprecedented it's a pandemic so everything has been done in a matter of 9 months that doesn't mean we have compromised on research and on safety preclinical toxicity virus is in, the vaccine is injected into small animals like mice and ferrets then they are challenged with virus they have to be protected then it goes to larger animals like monkeys that is also the same procedure my their animals are infected with virus i mean injected with vaccine four weeks later they are challenged with live virus and we see whether the animals are protected and they are developing antibody if it passes all these tests and there are no problems in animals or organs then it is cleared for human use human use is in three phases first phase is to assess safety here 100 volunteers are injected with the dose and their uh, metabolism is assessed their symptoms if any are assessed side effects are assessed and if it is clear it is safe then it goes to phase 2 
In phase two, we are asking the question whether the vaccine is raising the correct immune response, which means in technical terms, it is immunogenicity. Then we go to the third phase, which is the acid test. Large number of people, 25 to 30,000 people are given the vaccine. One third of them receive a placebo. A placebo is not a vaccine, but a vitamin or a, 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 a mineral solution that is given. And it is a blinded uh, fashion it is given. So if you're a volunteer, you don't know whether you received vaccine or you received vitamins. At the end of the trial, we look at how many people in the vaccine group got infection, how many people they monitor for usually 42 days, six weeks after the second dose and see if any of them have developed COVID symptoms and they sample them and see how many of them are PCR positive. And then the efficacy is calculated. Then after that, of course, when the vaccine is being used in, the, in, in uh, human beings, it is continuously monitored for side effects and its immunogenicity. Today, we have a number of vaccines that have been approved for human use. I'm showing you some of the uh, common ones that you would have all heard. There are uh, two that have been used extensively in America. They are in the middle, Moderna and Pfizer. They are both genetic vaccines, meaning the portion that uh, is uh, coding for the spike protein of the virus, which is the most important protein, that RNA is injected and it produces immunity. The vaccine extensively being used in India is the Oxford University AstraZeneca vaccine made by Serum Institute, marketed as Covishield. Very recently, India has given approval for Sputnik V vaccine, which is made by Gamalia Labs in Russia. It has been imported as a bulk, but Reddy Laboratories and four other companies in India will be starting production. And so by the year end, we'll have 800 million doses being produced by of Sputnik vaccine. Other than these four vaccines, our own indigenous vaccine, which was developed entirely by India, is the Covaxin, which the virus used there was virus isolated by National Institute of Virology, an ICMR institute, and partnering with ICMR, Bharat Biotech, developed a whole virus killed vaccine, which is one of the oldest technologies for vaccine production. And that vaccine is, is also being used extensively in India. All these vaccines that we are licensed in India and rest of the world, almost all of them, except Johnson Johnson vaccine, you need a minimum of two doses. And the mRNA vaccines require very low temperatures for storage. So it makes it a little difficult for use in India. All the others are stored at refrigerated temperature. The efficacy of these vaccines vary. AstraZeneca vaccine, COVID shield varies from 60 to 89%. The Covaxin efficacy is 70 to 80%. The RNA vaccines are 95% and Gamalia Sputnik vaccine is 92%. So vaccines, when they came last year, then we, everybody was excited, right? rightly so. And at the same time, this first wave of India started subsiding by November after peaking in September, October. And there were many people who, pundits who wrote saying India may not have second wave. It has handled it beautifully. And a second wave seems unlikely. And so many elegant articles were written. But some idiots like me in the end of November said, no, this is not the end of the story. History has told that there will be a second wave and that will be larger based on the Spanish flu experience. Anyway, in the first wave, we gave a lot of importance to lights and that hit our economy and livelihoods. So when we came out of the first wave, naturally, we started giving more importance to livelihoods. And that also resulted in a lot of super small super spreading events like parties, crowds, weddings, rallies, elections and 
many of these small small sparks as i call it super spreading events lit up a big fire and you know once a big fire is lit uh, i mean is lit even fire engines cannot douse it so that's what happened so a lot of things contributed to the second wave let me tell what they are crowding first of all not masking and before that even before that the attitude that covid is come and gone we have won the war on covid b no mask c crowding in closed spaces leading to super spreading events election rallies religious congregations like kumbh melas and then of course you had a uh, 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 a mutant that were started emerging late last year so the mutant was the icing on the cake but the cake was baked by us and the mutants was the icing on the cake well this is the second wave as you can see it every european country has had three waves and so also america has completed three and it's completing its fourth wave so it is but natural that we will have a next wave for several reasons now i told you already why the second wave occurred and i also want to tell you it is much much steeper than what people expected it's much bigger it caught us unawares the number of cases in most places compared to the first wave is 5 to 7 times more that's why we are having shortage in beds shortage in oxygen of course we did not expect it so i called it poor planning and we will be different states will be peaking differently because india is not one country in terms of population it is 30 countries and of course the healthcare system had to bear the brunt of the entire second wave that summer will uh, prevent transmission is a myth that new strains have made the virus more deadly is one school of pundits in whatsapp university telling me the other school other group of pundits in whatsapp you know no 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 as virus waves progress the virus will become less virulent both are armchair theories and not based on any scientific fact the mutants are more infectious yes but they are not more deadly because they are more infectious you are seeing more number of patients because you are seeing more number of patients proportion among them with severe disease is also more that doesn't mean it is more deadly older people were at risk during the first wave younger people are at risk at again a myth the fact is people in india is a young country people between 20 and 45 represent a large proportion of our population if you look at covid positive serious cases and look at their age break up the distribution is exactly what we saw in the first wave elderly in the middle age and elderly are having severe disease and the younger less than number of people are having uh, younger people are having severe disease another huge myth and i don't know who manufactures these myths and perpetuates them and whatsapp dr kalyan sundaram and i have been looking for them if you find them please i want to take a selfie with them rt pcr test misses the new mutants i don't know who said this is absolute rubbish rt pcr test that we use amplify three genes and 90% of the tests we use don't use the spike gene in the test most mutations occur in the spike protein so consequently the tests are not missing rt pcr tests are coming negative yes if people come late in the illness in breathlessness to a hospital at that time the nose and the throat swabs will be negative because lung has moved down deep into the, i mean virus has moved down deep into the lung so lung fluid is what will give you a positive test and of course when uh, you have huge surge specimens are not collected properly they are not stored properly they are not transported properly all these factors <clears throat> contribute to the uh, false negativity in stress 
hospitalization is necessary for everybody because this in the second wave the virus is more deadly no 80 to 90% have mild symptoms they can be managed at home but monitoring themselves or monitoring by a healthcare worker is absolutely essential because you can suddenly deteriorate in the second week as i mentioned so hospitalization is not required similarly everybody does not require remdesivir and everybody does not require oxygen these are myths that uh, that are there, I'll come to it shortly. Inhaling steam is good, but if you believe it is killing virus, that is nonsense. Inhaling steam makes your respiratory passages uh, clearer. It liquefies secretions, thereby you feel that you are able to breathe freely. It also clears the sweat pores in your face and you'll start looking more beautiful. So, go ahead, steam, but don't believe steam uh, kills the virus. There are many other myths that mobile networks transmit virus. I wish it could through WhatsApp and uh, so that, you know, all WhatsApp messages could be deleted in one's mobile. But unfortunately, it's not true. There are many myths around vaccines. A, it was rushed and it wasn't safe. I told you it has gone through all the stages and it is safe. It changes your genetic material. No, RNA vaccines don't integrate into our genome. It can give you COVID-19. We are not using live COVID virus. We are using either killed virus or we are using genetic material or we are using foreign viruses where only one protein of COVID is displayed like the AstraZeneca vaccine. It contains egg protein. No, COVID vaccines are not made in eggs like flu vaccines or some other vaccines. It causes severe side effects. No, the frequency of side effects is very, very less. We'll come to that shortly. It makes women sterile. These are anti-vaccine lobbies perpetuating wrong news. And also this myth that you should not, women should not take vaccines during when they have their periods because it is very dangerous. No, they can take it during their periods. So I think these are all myths. I wanted to clear it for you. Uh, the road ahead. How is it going to? Well, it's, it's a road. That's my most favorite uh, uh, figure on the left, that photograph, a road, road with many road humps. I was talking to Satish. I believe he makes suspensions for vehicles. So Satish, this is very apt for you. You better, even our life should be like the suspensions that Satish make. Whenever we come to a wave, which is equivalent to hump in this figure, we have to slow down. We have to slow down, reduce some of our activities, curb our activities, and then get over the wave and proceed till we meet the next speed breaker. We cannot travel at full speed. As I said in the first wave, we gave importance to lives, livelihoods, livelihoods took a beating. Second time we said, no, 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 livelihoods are very important. No, no, this is a mild virus, it will come and it will go. But the virus caused a huge surge. Now we are talking of lockdowns. Remember, life is not black and white. A large part of life is lived in grey. So both lives and livelihoods are important. We have to learn to balance both. We have to learn to respect the virus. And what we are seeing now is much like the curve you see in the centre on the right side. A first wave, a huge second wave. And the way we behave and the way we vaccinate people, we will determine the height of the third wave and the fourth wave. Vaccination is one of the most important tools available to us. In human history, vaccination is the most attractive possibility that has been used for preventing any disease. Whether it is rabies, whether it's smallpox, whether it is polio, whether it is measles, vaccines, vaccines, vaccines. Why are vaccines so popular? 
It's a time-tested strategy for many diseases. It induces protection artificially in a very effective manner. The acceptability is high. That's what human history tells you. However, it is expensive and laborious. Is vaccine the only solution? The un obvious answer is no. Behavioral change is the most simple solution, less expensive, but very difficult to implement. I imagine what happened between the first and the second wave. We don't want to wear masks. We are not used to it. It's something new. I don't know. People give hundreds of excuses. It's uncomfortable. Well, it's life. If you have to protect your life, you have to wear a mask. The virus is telling you, slow down. There's no need to be close with another human being, especially in, in markets and closed spaces. You can maintain a distance. Heavens won't fall if you don't have elections. Heavens won't fall if you don't have kumbha melas. Heavens don't fall if you don't have marriages for every year. Heavens won't fall. I don't know. I hear this this constant argument, oh, we have we cannot curb economic activity. Do elections contribute to economic activity? If so, please educate me how. Do election to Kumbh Mela's contribute to livelihoods and economic growth? Please educate me. Can we now sit back and say we are going to say no to these? If it is not going to be accepted, can we take a personal resolution? I shall not indulge in A, B, C, D. In the interest of my health and my family's health. Vaccines are an artificial method of producing a very aggressive defense against viruses. The immune system is bombarded with the correct type of proteins of the virus to make antibodies and also to make foot soldiers known as cell mediated immunity to eliminate viruses. This is the vaccine coverage status of India as of yesterday. We have given uh, um, approximately totally I think about 17 crore doses. We have given more first dose, first dose uh, vaccine to many people compared to second dose. But what I want you to focus on is on the graphic on the right. We opened up initially for healthcare workers and followed by frontline workers, then those above 60. April 1st, we said 45 to 60. Then huge demand saying open up for everybody. So the country opened up for anybody above 18. This vaccine is not permitted for use in pregnant women, women who are breastfeeding and children because the clinical trials did not include these participants and they are special groups. So right now trials are going on. So we'll have results probably in two, three months in these groups. Having said that, look at what we have achieved so far. In those about 60, only 40% we've been able to immunize. In the those about between 45 and 60, close to half of them we are able to immunize. We've just opened up for the younger lot. And you can see that in the younger lot, 9.2% of people, uh, I'm sorry, about 4.9% of the people have been immunized in the last 10 days or so. Vaccination is going to take time. India requires for its 100 crore adult 200 crore doses of vaccine. The entire world's production capacity is not 200 crore doses. 200 crores is 2,000 million doses. So we require time to ramp up production. We are doing that. And we require time to vaccinate. This is not like polio vaccine. You can drop into the mouth. of A healthcare worker can go and immunize hundreds of people just walking house to house. People have to come to a center. There should be a doctor. There should be a nurse. And the process takes one and a half hours. So it takes time. In a day, we are touching now. I think in the previous slide I showed. In a day, we are probably doing 17 to 20 lakh uh, vaccines a day. I think that's coming in the next slide. 
17 to 20 lakh vaccines a day. That's what we are doing. It's here in the top. 17 lakh 91,000, uh, 77, uh, uh, no, no, I'm sorry, 17 crores immunized. Yesterday was 20 lakh doses. That's what we gave yesterday, approximately. So it is going to take time, which means it's going to take six to eight months. Yesterday evening, the government of India revised the advisory for spacing between vaccines, especially COVID shield. COVID shield was initially advised uh, four weeks apart between the first and second dose. Then it was increased to six to eight weeks. Now it's increased to 12 weeks. Now there's a lot of debate. I was also on a debate last night at a TV channel. Is this advisory based on science or is it based on sense? It's based on both. It's based on science because the original trial conducted last year showed that participants were divided into three groups for second dose for COVID shield, four weeks, six weeks, and 12 weeks. And those at 12 weeks, had better antibody risk, uh, response and they had a better protection. Now, this makes it very important. What is protection? So, I think you have to understand the word protection. Protection means no severe disease. Protection means no death. Protection does not mean no infection. I think there is too much of expectation in people asking that a vaccine should protect against infection. It is not going to protect infection. No vaccine so far has been developed. There are some that are under trials. If they come, they are promising. They are nasal vaccines. Let us wait for them. Because the trial results said 12 weeks is better, UK, what it did, it adopted the 12-week interval. And it so that it could give more number of first doses to people and cover a large proportion. Even at the end of one dose, you get 50 to 60% protection against severe disease and death. So India adopted this both for science and for cell. Second, as I told you, uh, people who get natural COVID infection, their immune response lasts for three to five months. And after that, it will start declining between three to five months. So the government of India yesterday gave an advice at the end of six months. If you, are, if you are infected already, you can take the second dose at six months. But I personally believe that is too long. I think they will soon revise it. It should be between three to five months after you are positive for COVID. People do get infected after taking vaccine. This is some small amount of data which ICMR started collecting very recently. It is 0.2% for COVID shield after one dose, 0.4% for Covaxin. And after the second dose, it is 0.3% for COVID shield and 0.4% for Covaxin. But each of us know somebody who has received a vaccine and has found, has been infected, but all of them are having very mild disease, no severe disease. So vaccines are extremely useful. As I said, vaccines guarantee protection against COVID severity and death, but it does not prevent infection. Therefore, one has to continue wearing masks, maintain distance and wash hands, even after vaccination, so that you don't get infected. More importantly, you don't transmit infection to others. This is the, this is the capability of uh, vaccine production. India stands second after USA. India's capacity is to make 3.13 billion doses. Hopefully, we will reach that. Apart from the waves of corona, there are other waves one has to remember. We went through enormous morbidity, mortality, and logistic preparation, which is the first wave. The second wave is what we have gone through between uh, the last eight months, where a lot of resources, restriction, livelihoods affected. And then, of course, the, we are going to face the next phase of interrupted 
uh, you know, interruptions because of COVID in the next one year or so. But throughout, from the beginning of COVID, Dr. Kalyan Sundaram and his, his, and his uh, specialists have faced a number of people who have had psychological trauma, mental illness, economic injury, and healthcare workers is burnt out. So these are the other waves of COVID. There will be a third wave. I was one of the uh, first uh, fools to stick out my neck and say it will be there and it's going to uh, come in uh, like the second wave, if not to that magnitude, maybe lesser. Every country in the world around us has gone through a third wave. We are no exception. We'll get a third wave because we will not be able to immunize all adults. Waves usually come between a gap of three to five months. In the next six months, seven months after this wave subsides, towards the end of the year is when the third wave will come. It will affect adults and children. All the adults who are not vaccinated now will be at risk of COVID that time. And children will be more in numbers. In the first wave, they were 4%. In the second wave, they are around 10%. But some places, 20%. So they will come in large numbers. And they will they are vulnerable because they don't even have a vaccine. And if we open schools, we may start super spreading events. So we'll have to have a discussion. Do we open schools, colleges continuously? Are we going to be online? Are we are going to have interrupted online, offline? Whenever there is a small surge in a locality, we're going to shut down, then open up after two weeks. We have to prepare for beds, oxygen, and essential drugs, which we have in the second wave. The same thing will continue because all adults who are not vaccinated will again be targets. We also have to prepare for beds, oxygens, and drugs for children. We need pediatric intensive care units. And we also have to ask the question, are we going to treat COVID children and other sick children in the same hospital? Do we have plans for segregation? I think there's a lot of homework to do. But most importantly, I would be, I would appeal to all of you, avoid crowding. Don't go to crowded places. Don't go to religious gatherings. Don't go to weddings. Minimize them. They are not required. Let the groom and the bride marry along with their families. Don't have rallies. Definitely no elections. Because I am very convinced that elections do not propel economy. I think we should say nothing will happen. We can have president's rule. We can extend the term depending on which body there are elections. I don't think they are required. This is my personal opinion. Wear masks is very, very important another year. And wear them properly and maintain social distance. I think these are the lessons. Since you are all people working in the industry, I would like to to make one point in this slide, the last point, use a risk matrix in your workplace. This, I have been an advisor for Tata Steel and Biocon, and we have put protocols in place in these large factories where we divide people into green, yellow, and orange categories. Green means people who have minimal contact with others, they are like, less likely to get infected. Red means they are people who have contact with many people in your workspace and they are in crowded areas. So canteen workers, those who provide serve other services, uh, security guards, these are the people who are in contact and vendors who come and go, they are in contact. And there are, of course, others who are in the in-between category. So if you can classify your employees at workplace and take care of work and also introduce periodic testing once in 15 days, and you, you have to work out these protocols, and I'm happy to provide uh, a separate uh, assistance to you in, in, in giving you advice and protocols on how this can be done. Remember closed spaces with poor ventilation, crowds. What is a crowd? More than two is a crowd. And close contact settings is where the virus thrives and jumps from one person to another. 
wearing a mask, maintaining distance, and washing hands is the thing. To summarize, SARS-CoV-2 is a new virus. You can get protection either by infection or by getting vaccinated. Vaccination is an easier way to get protection. Please go ahead and get vaccinated. It is safe. Also use social vaccine. What is social vaccine? Wear a mask, maintain distance, and wash your hands. Remember one thing that unless we change our behaviors, the virus will not stop circulating. If we wear masks, we protect vulnerable people at our home, elderly and the children. The road ahead is bumpy with many speed breakers. And please use whatever information you got today into changing the vocabulary of COVID. Viruses will mutate, but let us mutate in our behavior and wear masks. Let us quarantine and social distant uh, gatherings, elections, rallies. Let's follow the new normal. And there is an infodemic out there. Try to sieve the grain from the shaft and rely on positive information. Be positive. Think positive. I'm sure we'll all be safe if we follow these small <clears throat> tips. Thank you very much. All right. <clears throat> Thank you, Dr. Ravi. I'm sure. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Ravi, for a scintillating 60-minute talk on virus, virus behavior, and more importantly, human behavior, which is misbehavior. More than two is a crowd. Section 144, all four members keeping six feet apart, not social distance, but physical distance. If you do not follow the fundamental, if you insist on going and hugging the virus, virus will walk inside and say, thank you very much, I'm with you. Man, it will also say, I'm just not with you, I'm going to be friends with your friends and their friends and their friends. And we are sitting here and lamenting, why did it happen? Ladies and gentlemen, this is not a second wave, this is a tsunami. Dr. Ravi has warned, third wave will come. People are asking, how can we prevent third wave? You don't prevent third wave by sitting tight on the peak of the second wave. You prevent by your behavioral change. There are about more than 200 questions which have been divided into various sections, which has come in advance. And there are questions that are pouring into this. Ravi will have to spend midnight uh, with us. And I think both of us will have a, uh, some you know, fresh juice and meal to continue this conversation. But let us take a few questions. Uh, in the second wave, deaths of young people seem to be more than the first wave. Any particular reason? I think Dr. Ravi has already answered this question. Any, any specific point you want to mention here? No, no. I just want to say that we had five times, five to seven times more people. So, proportionately. But if you look at the fatality rate, it is still same as what it was in the first week. Is new mutant airborne? Uh, I think it was airborne. Virus, virus, virus. Uh, we acknowledge now that the virus is airborne. And let me get this terminology very clear. Uh, whenever there are droplets that are more, uh, more than 5 micrometers in diameter, they will fall to the ground. So they are more dangerous because they have more virus. And when you are close to a person, you get infected heavily with big droplets. The, the smaller droplets travel in the air for a longer distance. And this, when you say travel in the air for longer distance, is inside closed spaces. If you are in the garden, which uh, with the air, with the breeze blowing, it gets diluted and washed away. There it is not air mm -hmm. In closed spaces, more so in public toilets, closed toilets, bars, pubs, restaurants, basements, clubs, Yes, it is air. Bus, tra bus travel, close to train travel. Yes. All of those places. Yes. 
uh, Ravi is going to love this question. Body disposal example in Ganga River. In such conditions, can we be free of coronavirus in the upcoming day? Body disposal in Ganga? I didn't get the last part. Body disposal in Ganga River, for example. Mm. In such situations, can we be free of coronavirus because it has just been disposed of in the Ganges? Oh, yeah. That's a very, very nice control strategy. I think we should uh, adopt it everywhere, even in tanks and wells in the houses. I mean, what can I say? It's so sad. Mm. It's so sad that in the 21st century, we are still having practices that disseminate not the virus, but dead <laughs> bacteria from a dead body contaminating the water. Virus at least will, uh, you know, will not live for very long in a dead body, but other bacteria will pollute the water and absolutely unwarranted and it should not be done. Many people are concerned about the third wave and we have mentioned in the past a few lectures, even today you emphasize, be careful, it might attack the children and they don't have a vaccine for the children yet. So how do we protect our children? I think... Because we also we, talk, yeah, Ravi? If I sound alarmist, please forgive me. The only thing is I'm cautioning people. The good thing about children is large, larger proportion of them are asymptomatic. But recognizing the illness in children is something that's a challenge. Because if they're very young, they, will, they don't complain. You will have to look for signs in them. Increased breathing, if it's a neonate or a, or a toddler or an infant. Increased breathing, temperature, not taking feeds, you know. So, recognition is important. But in, we have 30 crore people who are under 18 in this country. Even if a very small proportion of get, get uh, the infection and disease, so that is what we should be planning. How do you prevent? Vaccines will come in the next three, four months. Get your children vaccinated. Yesterday, the director, drug controller general gave permission for co-vaccine trials between 2 to 18. Pfizer is completing its trials. So I'm sure other vaccines also very quickly will do trials in children. So get vaccinated. We will have to, as a nation, have discussions and decide whether we are opening schools. And if we open schools, are we ready for interrupted online sessions? Whenever there is a slight change, and most importantly, I think policymakers <clears throat> government should listen to expert advice. I'm sorry, in the second wave, they did not listen. In the first wave, everybody listened, and so we managed. See, evidence, data should drive interventions. Not politics and impression should not drive intervention. So I think there are many takeaways. We should we should uh, be ready to continue online maybe for another six months till children are vaccinated. But I know online education also had an impact on children. So somewhere we need a balance. As I said, lives livelihoods both are important. We are a country of extremes. We latch on to one and then we elect another party the second time and bring the first party again back. I mean, culturally, we seem to do the extremes. Now, uh, to prevent a third wave, should I go to the terrace for fresh air? Ravi, let me answer this. Please. You can go to terrace for a fresh air when you're all by yourself. If you don't go there for a crowd and a party, you will destroy all of them. More importantly, wherever you go, wear a mask, keep the distance, if you forget to do the fundamentals, we can go to the terrace, we can go to the park, wherever you go, if you do not follow the fundamentals, you will be named a super spreader, you will appear in the TV as a specialist in this area. So be aware, fundamentals, do not forget. Uh, what about fungus? People are talking about fungus in the second wave, maybe more in the third wave. Is there any European on fungus? Yeah, I, I want to tell you that it has been there always, even before COVID at Nimhans, Dr. Kalyan Sundaram will recall. We have been seeing this fungus, the, the so-called black fungus, causing yeah. infection in the nose and spreading to the brain. 
uh, it is very common in people who have diabetes it is also common in people who have taken steroids for long time because they are immunosuppressed in the second wave it has become very prominent because the number of people who have got severe disease in terms of numbers is more and this time around we are using aggressively steroids to treat uh, covid more than other drugs because it's it's shown to be beneficial to uh, for covid patients and if you have a combination of steroids and diabetes fungal infections of this kind occur not during the acute phase of covid but 2 to 3 weeks after you get over the acute phase of covid so i think it's early recognition is by by uh, looking in post covid for headache facial pain eyeball pain pain behind the eyeball drooping of the eyelid these are some of the early signs and at that time you can save them but in, once it goes to the brain mortality is 50% why do we get so exhausted with the virus disease like covid why did they get so exhausted why muscle fatigue yeah mm. see see one of the reasons uh, you get excessive fatigue is this virus is a potent driver of inflammatory molecules so it produces fever and sometimes this fever can be quite high unlike other viral infection 102 103 mm. can last for a long time because there is so much of cytokines secreted in the body after this infection they make you feel tired they produce muscle pains they exhaust the muscles that's how you feel tired we work in closed spaces air conditioned rooms and uh, you have talked about how kind of a caution we must have we also after a long days work we want to socialize we want to have a cup of coffee with our friend maybe we go to a bar if it is open we need this kind of an outlet but how do we balance between our need and caution ha huh. i think it's a balance that you have to strike first of all air conditioning is bad i would say air conditioning because uh, it it uh, the virus stays in heavy cold air for longer duration of time instead of 3 to 4 hours it can remain 6 to 8 hours so if you can avoid air conditioning and practice the good old grandmother grandfather strategy of opening all windows running the fans full and letting fresh air there is nothing like it and operating at 50% workforce especially when there is a surge so that you know your social distancing is guaranteed <clears throat> rather than having your full staff rotate them one of them this one of the, so the lessons we have learned in covid you rotate your workforce half come this week and the other half comes that week i think these are and of course you will have to innovate in your own workspace there are no there are no uh, one size fits all solutions for everybody there are certain questions come into the category of psychology how many days do we have to suffer this covid will there be a light in in the tunnel tunnel when will that be any uh, you know predictions dr ravi yeah i you look at i read my palm myself and my, my as, viral astrology says another year by the time we will get vaccinated provided all of us wear masks and maintain social distance for the next one year some people say vaccination causes problem can i avoid being vaccinated dr ravi when you say all of us should get vaccinated this is a democratic country of course you can get uh, you need not take vaccine but be sure the virus will catch you and once so a virus virus catches you it's a lottery and i don't like playing lottery i don't know about you sundar yeah, i'll add i'll add i will add to this yeah. by not taking vaccination you are posing a risk not only for yourself your immediate family members and your other friends who have already been vaccinated and you're going to be a willing donor to them and an unwilling recipient for them i think you have a social responsibility today to take this vaccine notwithstanding several pundits several other armchair theorists who say i have seen people taking vaccination and yet getting infected 
Why does it happen, Ravi? Vaccinated and infection. Because we have not understood the word protection, and secondly, we as a species are very greedy. Name one vaccine in the history of medicine that has prevented infection. It has not. Polio vaccine prevents paralytic illness, but you get infected and you excrete polio virus in your stools. Measles vaccine prevents measles disease, but virus multiplies in your throat and you can pass the infection to others. So why are we expecting COVID vaccine to do miracles? First of all, such a vaccine is a myth. If it comes, it's a bonus. So what more do you want? It's protecting severe disease and it's protecting death. So when will your greed end? Thank God it is not preventing infection. If it prevents infection, uh, uh, Sundar, people will not wear masks. They will not uh, maintain distance. So what you are saying, Ravi, is this. You take vaccination, the chances of your protection against illness like COVID infection is very high. You can prevent it to a very large extent. If you do by chance, by ill luck, you get it. And you're going to have very, very minimal, mild symptoms. You can get away with it. Absolutely. But even after getting the two vaccinations, you cannot walk like a Tarzan with a chest open and say, I have done it. I am now a champion. I don't need masks. I will wander around wherever I want because I have had two vaccinations. I can do what I want. Isn't that a very foolish thing to do? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, protection, no matter what you do, even after two, two vaccinations, masking, distance, and no partying, no gatherings, until the large sections of the society and your community and your family are all protected with the vaccination, then only we can think of it, not even act on it. For performing pranayama daily helps to prevent COVID. Not a statement, thankfully, but question mark. Yeah. Pranayama is a very good uh, exercise. It has several benefits, not only on the respiratory system, on the brain mm -hmm. and the immune system. But Pranayama, there is no evidence to say, has results in preventing viral infection, nor is there any molecule that is produced after <clears throat> pranayama that is antiviral. So, pranayama is very good to do always, more so after if someone gets COVID, because it helps your uh, lungs. Lung capacity. Yeah. Lung capacity. Now, there are fundamental questions people always want to know. I get infected. I do not know when I'm infected. On this Monday, I have developed symptoms. I have a mild cough, some fever, throat irritation. I'm kidding myself and saying this is not COVID and there's only a throat infection. After two days, this worsens. I begin to get cough and I walk. I become slightly breathless. Now, by then, it is three days since my first symptom. But I'm asking you, Ravi, that infection has already set in before your first symptom, at least two days. So, given the scenario, when do I get my test done? When is it likely to be positive? When am I infective to others? When will I stop infecting others in the next two-week period? This is a question that keeps coming in a different forms. Okay. Okay. Very, very nice question. First of all, if you are in contact with a known positive person, you should have a very, very high index of suspicion. Get yourself tested immediately. If I have been positive and Sundar and I had a chat today, this evening, and tomorrow I told him Sundar I'm positive, then on tomorrow Dr. Kalan Sundaram will get tested. And again he will get tested the fifth to seventh day from tomorrow. That is because the highest chance of a test being positive is fifth to seventh day after virus enters the body. That is if you are asymptomatic. The moment you have any of the symptoms that I showed you in the slide, first day you can get tested and if it is COVID, it will show up. In symptomatic people, COVID test, don't delay. Do it on the day you got your first symptom. And 95% chance you will detect the virus. If it is COVID. Number three, 
one week after you develop symptoms or one week after you are known or you are known to be positive of a contact both these from the day you are positive please monitor your oxygen you are likely to worsen between 5 to 12 days i made that point how long will i be <clears throat> be infectious actual data says for 14 days most of the people clear the virus 14 days that's why the quarantine time is 14 days and then we say come out of your isolation room wear a mask and stay for another 7 days just to be careful because there are those odd people who shed virus for a long time okay so at the end of 14 days you come out of a quarantine but you must wear a mask and you do not compromise yes now the current protocol says that we compared to what the earlier time we talked about the last time 10 days but after we have finished 14 days of quarantine i'm symptom free for the last 7 days i'm fine should i do a test again or yes. it is not necessary please it is not necessary emphasize that it is not necessary right now in the second wave because we have enough experience during the first wave and enough information collected all over the globe through various studies that if you are symptom free underline that if you are symptom free for 7 days in your 14 day period then there is no need for a test you have stopped shedding virus now several questions have come about the same thing i have taken the first vaccination i am due for my second vaccination between 4 and 6 weeks i am ready but lo and behold i have been hit by covid so first of may i am hit by covid today is 14th from your description i am now free of covid maybe from tomorrow day after i'm back to moving with the family and i've come out of quarantine my injection vaccination is due next week should i take should i not take and when should i take you Someone should specific- take you should take but you should not take immediately i was talking about the guideline yeah. government yeah. says you can take it at the end of 6 months but i would advise you take it 3 months after your pcr result came positive you had your vaccine so you have to wait for not 2 months you think you recommend 3 months of waiting why, why do you want to because the yeah, yeah. infection yeah. itself is a booster and when the active immune response is going on for following a natural infection don't disturb it you wait for it to subside and then you take the vaccine actually you are at benefit because you are a person who is receiving a booster third booster or a second booster you are lucky that you are getting exposed three times so your responses will be better don't do it immediately because your natural immune response is already there so there is no need to uh, again um, tire the immune system down with another shot so wait for the shot and take the benefit of it three months later I have taken the second shot, and three days later, but with some symptoms, I have tested positive. How did it happen? How did it happen? Because you went to the vaccination center and got the vaccine. Got got the virus. <laughs> If it is three days. Yeah. So that means, even after you are taking the second shot, the fact that you have developed symptoms, you have become positive because prior to the second shot, you have picked up the virus. You were not aware of it. You are in the incubation period. I know yeah. at least three people in my WhatsApp OPD who went for a marriage two days before vaccination. Oh my! Now people talk about viral load. What is this viral load? And what is this cytokine storm? Because when people throw these terms in the TV and WhatsApp, people think cytokine storm. Oh my goodness! Oh. This must be something deadly. What is this? Okay, let me tell you what viral load is. Viral load is the amount of virus in one ml of body fluid. It is a misnomer in the context of PCR that is done for uh, COVID virus. What we do in uh, COVID virus uh, <clears throat> diagnosis is a um, polymerase chain reaction where we replicate virus forty cycles. We do amplify the little. um bit of genetic material 
and the earlier in the amplifications if it comes positive it is surrogate evidence that there may be more virus but it is not absolute evidence there is no correlation between viral load and the type of disease one has uh, we have seen high viral loads in people who are asymptomatic and we have seen very low viral loads in people who are on the ventilator and very critically ill so using viral load to manage patients clinically is absolutely useless it is erroneous we should not do it so viral load is not a tool to be used for management of patients and it is not required to be mentioned even in the report second question what is cytokine storm is a very 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 bombastic word uh, phrase that uh, uh, dr sundar people get frightened about yeah yes when virus multiplies in the human lung our defense system reacts it attacks the virus in the process it pours out a lot of fluid we call this inflammatory fluid lung is supposed to have air but lung gets filled with water which how did this water come because our army within our body went on a rampage killed many cells and poured out used water cannons and filled the lung with fluid that is called and these molecules are called cytokines and they contribute to flooding of the lungs so that is referred to as a local cytokine storm within the lung why do people working from home get the virus uh there are many reasons many people tell me i've never stepped yeah. out for 3 months correct absolutely yes right but you just uh, crack a few jokes and then ask them yeah mates that one comes no my brother in law comes once in a while to have a chat with me who told you your brother in law does not have covid you assume certain people to be safe and certain people you have some stereotypes in your mind this kind of person has virus he used to be bald he has to wear beard he has to be in a red shirt and he should be working in a mental hospital and he should be a virus wearing, and wearing glasses wearing glasses so that fellow will have virus their viruses do not jump on their own human contact will be there second reason if there is no human contact i know of instances in apartment complexes where aerosols contribute there are studies elegant studies from hong kong and i have done some tv shows uh, national on the national television where you know in large tall apartment complexes there are chutes next to a toilet and an infected person sick excretes virus in his stool for up to 3 weeks so he can be infectious so when he or she uses a western commode and then flushes the toilet with the lid open from the fecal matter you generate aerosols and they linger in toilets are worst places in in human habitation because they are poorly ventilated so the air is and they go through the side <clears throat> vents into the chutes and they can go up air floats up so higher floors people can get infected that is why it's very important every day in the morning for some time to open all doors windows and aerate your houses when you live in closed spaces and also in multi story building they use the lift we do not know how many people have traveled exactly. up and down in the lift and, and which are the third mask yeah yes. it's a closed space yes. and you will say that i never came into contact but i went 10 yeah. times in the lift to pick up something from the ground floor is it a natural virus or is it a man made weapon i don't know g o k god only knows available evidence shows that it has 99.9% genetic homology with pangolin virus and 9.5% homology with bat virus bats and pangolins were in a, found in a crowded market where the first index case of 
COVID-19 was reported in Wuhan on December 8, 2019. So we believe it is a natural virus. Whether it's a man-made virus, even if it is man-made, they've done a fantastic job because they generally, when man-made viruses, they will put one marker to trace it in the population where all it has gone. Such a marker, genetic marker is not found in this virus. So the answer is we do not know. We believe it's... All right. <clears throat> we have, you know, it is 6.40. We have crossed 20, 10 minutes, 11 minutes beyond our scheduled time. But with Dr. Abhi's permission, we'll go for another 10, 15 minutes. And we will take questions from the floor, which have come in the chat box in the question and answer. Uh, there are a lot of questions from psychology, psychiatry, but I have deliberately not taken it because today's emphasis is on Dr. Ravi and Ravi's talk. Psychiatric complications, psychiatric exacerbations, mental health uh, issues, it's a completely different topic. It's a huge topic in itself. Once you start going into that, there is no end to this. Unfortunately, even though I'm a psychiatrist, I'm not taking this today because Dr. Ravi's core issue will need to address today. What do you think of plasma? People are wanting to give an artificial oxygen. You know, these machines that produce oxygen, people are now buying and keeping it just in case. What do you think? Uh, I, I, plasma therapy is useful in the first three, four days because that's when you neutralize the virus. Once the virus goes to the lung, the disease is produced mm. not because of the virus, but by the aggressive cytokine storm. So plasma, virus, uh, plasma therapy should be given pooling plasma which has high levels of antibody. If you collect plasma from everybody and don't test for the level of antibody, then you may dilute the plasma and it may be useless. So these are the... And those who have recovered from COVID, it's nice to go and donate your plasma. Even if not for a COVID patient, Plasma is very, very useful for other patients. So, donation of blood or plasma is a very noble act. Please do that. You will not become weak by donation. Second point is the question about oxygen concentrator. Oxygen concentrators have been used for many years. Now, they have become in great demand. It's a good idea, if you think, to buy an oxygen concentrator and keep. People, as they grow old, they get obstructive pulmonary disease. Sometimes their oxygen beyond 75, 80, people will need. So it's a good idea to have an oxygen concentrator at home. It costs, right now it is costing around 70,000 rupees. It takes oxygen from the air, which is about 20% uh, is the atmospheric air concentration of oxygen. It removes nitrogen, which is 70%, and thereby it's able to give you uh, concentrated oxygen. And you can get up to 5 liters per minute in an oxygen concentrator. So I know of many people, many of my friends from US and uh, UK, who are through charity sending large number of oxygen concentrators for people to use in India. Some people say Corona is not a virus, but it's a bacteria. Absolutely. What does the bacteria, what does the one who started as a microbiologist who turned out to be a splendid virologist, what's your take? It is rubbish. Viruses are different from bacteria. Bacteria can grow on artificial media on non-living matter, viruses require living matter and they grow only in living cells. There's a huge difference between bacteria and virus. Bacteria are, can be treated and cured with antibiotics if they are not resistant, whereas vi viruses cannot be treated with antibiotics. So this is, this is the fundamental. Bacteria have both RNA and DNA. Viruses have either RNA or DNA. So I can go on, but I don't want to take class on my privilege. Family of four tested positive, mingle as a parents as small kids. It's difficult to keep the kids isolated. True, it's very true. Absolutely. But I suppose you'll have to make sure uh, as much as possible the kind of a separation that can be made. I agree, but keeping, keeping the children out of your ambit is difficult. Sometimes they do test positive. I think Ravi has already mentioned that. 
uh, one practical question we plan to have our first child but we are confused for vaccination should it be done before pregnancy or is it effective to be do during pregnancy very practical question real life situation young couple they are married planning a child now this corona has come and confused the whole system it is best to get vaccinated before you plan the child a brilliant number 2 accidentally people have become pregnant after first dose or by without knowing they have become pregnant no harm it doesn't cause any damage to the fetus but second dose is not recommended till we get enough data from the trials that are going on my own take is vaccines are safe in these vaccines are safe but then unless they are tried out and data comes regulator is not going to give approval so you may get the approval for pregnant and lactating women feeding mothers very shortly so if you are planning a child better to finish immunization and then give up thank you ravi now there in the first wave there's a lot of talk noise about uh, when you get a parcel you sanitize it you don't touch the handle you don't touch the surface somebody has touched the plate where is it sitting on the plate you don't touch it for 6 minutes you wait now what is the story now what do we know about this you know on the surface of one year, we know at the end of one year through many many studies done by many many uh, countries including the mecca of of uh, infectious diseases the center for disease control in atlanta if you go to their website they very clearly say it's a classical case of came with a bang and went with a whimper when the virus came new we were all thinking that you know yes it stays in surfaces that fact is very true but that is not the main mode of transmission mm-hmm. human to human contact is main mode but remember anything you touch is a good habit to wash your hands before you touch your nose or you eat that's very important we say sputnik is coming i mean sputnik vaccine is coming sputnik v double dose sputnik light single dose i'm a bit confused would i be exposing myself to take a single dose because all around me have taken two doses see the trial of sputnik uh light is happening right now the results are not published <clears throat> yet i am on the board of uh, international advisors of sputnik we discussed this in one of the meetings so it is very early to say whether it will be approved by regulators all over it depends on the de- degree of uh, protection it offers having said that johnson and johnson is a vaccine that is Uh, also a uh, viral vector i didn't know viral vector vaccine which they when they started the trials itself they started two groups one receiving one dose and the other receiving two doses and the one dose one is 70% effective so regulators are giving approval because you can immunize large number of people very fast with a single dose what about smokers are they more vulnerable absolutely corona the lungs yeah. are damaged okay. the lungs are damaged already so there are studies from china you know china has a high proportion of smokers and many yeah. of the people who who developed severe disease uh, during uh, the covid uh, pandemic mm-hmm. in the first wave and had severe disease and died were smokers yes okay now there are several people who keep asking question to me in my clinic i'm sure they ask you the question that come up here is there an any absolute no no for this vaccination in terms of comorbidity is there any other medical other conditions that people may suffer from where you can say this person cannot have a vaccination because today somebody asked me sir my son is mildly mentally subnormal can he have the vaccination my answer to that person is yes can a person taking uh, psychiatric medication can he take the vaccination answer is yes he is having psychiatric disease my answer is yes Is there any condition where you would say, Doctor Ravi, that the vaccination should not be given, or you say, irrespective of what the comorbid condition, because you are dealing with a very deadly virus, it is safer to take a vaccination because it is fine to do it. What do you think? 
there is no condition that is an absolute contraindication but i think are, i would would you would you repeat this again please there is no disease condition that is an absolute contraindication for covid vaccination absolutely at that i must tell you that before getting vaccinated a group of some people should inform the vaccinator about their health status and so that the 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 observation period is better i know many many of my doctor friends who had multiple allergies to food and drugs they all asked they all asked me what to do i gave them the most practical advice they're all happy the practical advice is how do you know you will react to a drug there is a traditional practice in medicine you give a test dose small dose in the skin and wait for uh, symptoms like itching tingling of lips breathing difficulty if you get such a thing then immediately they will give you steroids and adrenaline so you cannot take the vaccine that is in a contraindication if you are if you have uh, reacted to a test dose and whom do you give a test dose for those people who have uh, propensity of allergy to a large number of substances there also you be careful and all my two, two dozen friends did not react to the vaccine to a safe they waited for 2 3 hours and then they took the vaccine so uh when will vaccine be available for women who are feeding breastfeeding babies actually Because currently the center for disease control advisory on the website which they put up recently is it is safe it is left to the individual lactating mother to decide whether they want to take the vaccine they have to weigh the weigh the benefits and then take the vaccine indian government has said in its advisory no for lactating mothers 3 months time we will have the results in pregnant women lactating mothers and also children you have said, said after taking two vaccinations you don't need to wear a mask and you can go around partying and attend music festivals dr ravi you were uh, idea about the personal opinion of- it is absurd foolish i thought the present government is better than the previous government because the previous government and the president were advocating it i don't know what happened to the present president anyway that's my personal opinion but let me tell you it's absolutely foolish it's baseless unless you reach 80 85% of the population is already vaccinated then maybe one can start lowering the guard in an experimental manner not more than 55 60% of people in usa are vaccinated god save usa i have taken two vaccinations and i am facing third wave i am worried there may be a fourth wave around the corner maybe sometime next year march april should i take a booster dose next year uh, right now it is too early to say from what we know from vaccine trials that started 9 months ago people are maintaining good antibody levels and protection they have developed memory cells memory cells if they are there protection lasts for one year so i would say wait for one year if the virus mutates too much and starts escaping vaccines which is not done right now then like influenza shots you may get a new combination every year which may have to take in the meantime if you have taken two doses please sit back and relax and also be generous and allow others to take their first two doses don't go in and say give me another dose uh after covid pneumonia after treatment how long should the person be isolated i think dr ravi has very made it very clear if you are symptom free during the second week of your 14 day 14 day isolation you can just get out of your isolation but do not let your guard down under any circumstances but if you have had symptoms 
in the second half of your 14th day wait for another week yeah wait for another week before you start mixing with other people all right uh we have already talked about why is the government keep shifting the gap between especially covid shield now when i took it it was after four weeks then it became six weeks now they are saying 12 weeks dr v has answered because evidence is showing even up to 12 weeks the antibody production production in the system is very good but are we saying it because we do not have enough vaccines or you actually want us to wait for 12 weeks i told you it is both based on sense and science science is in the trial results showed that at the end of 12 weeks you are still getting protection sense is uk did this deliberate experiment saying that we will give a gap of 12 weeks we want to cover more number of people in the first dose we do not have enough vaccines to give two doses to everybody but we want a large proportion to get benefit with one dose so they openly accepted and did it so i think it makes sense and science supports it so i think it's a very welcome move wonderful i think uh, dr ravi has done a fantastic job of answering most of your all the questions but we could not take all the questions by paucity of time we plan for and we have now come to nearly 120 minutes it just shows how people are hungry for knowledge and correct information from the correct specialist all of those people who are sitting here today they want their first data input from what dr very they all are their input there therefore i think it is important that we understand what the virus has done from the right kind of a person to get the correct perspective i am sure all your questions have not been answered because as we listen more we have more doubts and that is how natural thinking should be but the fundamentals cannot be forgotten masking physical distance no crowding under any circumstances if you do that it is under your peril two vaccinations does not guarantee no infection so be cautious do not tempt the virus do not tempt your fate you are responsible not only for your health you are responsible for the health of your family and people around you and the community and a very very big thank Dr. Kalyan sir, we can't hear you. Probably, I think your audio is gone. We can't hear you, Dr. Sure. I think. I think we've had a fabulous session. Probably the session was uh, so amazing. Dr. Kalyan Sudram's uh, earpods uh, maybe ran out of battery and uh, are not able to pick up his voice and share it with us. Uh, I really thank uh, Dr. Ravi for being here with us. Uh, it's absolutely our uh, privilege to have had you here. Uh, I mean, it was amazing what we learned. uh you could take it from a uh, layman's perspective and translate a very complex uh, science and be able to share it with us uh, thank you so much doctor and answering so many many questions i think we are very grateful to you and uh, i i i mean i'm i'm speechless i i think if we if you if you were in a live audience this would have been a standing ovation so thank you very much um, i think the attendance is, at this uh, program people usually drop out uh halfway three fourths of the way and this is way beyond the scheduled time 
and i can tell you the single uh, message from this is this is perhaps the largest event we've had uh, in the southern region and number two this is an event where we not had people drop out till literally the vote of thanks i was telling satish people won't stay for the vote of thanks <laughs> but uh, it's amazing we have everybody who's pretty much stayed on there's large number of people who didn't join into this but have joined into youtube so we are very grateful to you dr ravi dr kalyan sundram amazing uh, you know uh, uh, coordinating all the questions a barrage that came at you and uh, to be able to package it nicely and uh, get it answered in a very logical and coherent manner thank you so much and uh, thank you so much for bringing dr ravi onto this platform and uh, my dear friend satish thank you so much for uh, making this happen thanks to uh, our president uh, mr deepak jain deepak thank you thanks for supporting this to be a, a national event uh, thanks everyone and of course thanks to our uh, uh, regional team anil and neerja thank you so much and last but not the least thanks to the audience without you this event won't be where it is once again thanks everyone really appreciate it thank Bye -bye. you doctor thank you doctor bye bye thank, thank you everybody thank thanks you. a lot thank you thank you really appreciate it now dr kalyan has your dear dr kalyan sir request for a lot of uh, 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 request for a presentation copy if, if a shareable version can be given we'll like to share with all the participants please i'll i'll mail it to i think uh, i'm in touch with uh, anil and sathi yeah. and dr kalyan sundar from there right. really appreciate sir thank you thank sir. you sir thank you doctors thank you thank you everybody atma thank you ravi and thank you all of you for a wonderful uh chan for us to participate thank thanks you, a lot thank you. thank you very much bye bye do we disconnect yes vikram thank you thank you so much good day